Okay, as you can see here, um, pretty standard packaging for Saints Martin Genmitsu. A couple little nicks on the box, but I don't think anything too serious. Uh, the machine shouldn't be damaged with the way it's packaged. Um, I did get this in less than a week, and I think it came from the um, uh, their warehouse in Las Vegas, Nevada. So it was probably about five or six days till I got it. And uh, I think it weighs about uh, 30 kilos or about 66 pounds. So, uh, you know, some people might need help uh, carrying it around, but for the most part, it wasn't too bad. So I'll go ahead and open it up and see what we have here. So it looks like it should be pretty well um, standard packaged uh, with the foam. So let's see. And then uh, here is your instruction manual. And then again, it's pretty, pretty typical for uh, same smart engine Mitsu with the illustrations and very detailed instructions on what you need to do. So I'll go ahead and look at that here in a bit. And they do include uh, just a little chart here for your for their same smart bits for their nano blue coated bits. And there's also a QR code on the form here that um, you can uh, use that with your phone and get a little bit more detailed information on uh, the uses and other information on the bits that they uh, sell on their website and I think there's also some most of them are 1 8 inch bits but they do have some of the small spiral bits and uh, some V bits and uh, surfacing bits so uh, you know if you want to check those out go ahead so put that away and uh, again pretty typical packaging you know you have your power cord uh, your USB stick uh, your clamps that go into the the T slots of the bed there, your Z probe. Yeah, let's see here your USB cable and then your Allen wrenches and uh, your spindle wrenches there it looks like. And then over here, you know we've got a couple packages of bits, probably some V bits and uh, some straight slotted bits there. And you have a little nut driver wrench for your ball screws on the y-axis if you need to adjust those so that they're the same distance um, and parallel to each other. An extra coupler, package of assembly screws there, an extra uh, spindle mount, uh, most likely the 65 millimeter mount. And then here's your upgraded uh, Z-axis here. I think it has a uh, 400 watt spindle and has the uh, pretty couple pretty heavy duty um, posts in there with the ball screw and the closed uh, closed loop motors. So that should uh, work pretty good there. Put that back for a moment and we'll take out the next assembly here. So that should go around this way when you mount your, your Z assembly on there so uh, I'll go ahead and get this stuff put aside and we'll see uh, see the rest of it packaged in there in a moment okay so also I got that stuff out of the way so what I did forget here is you got the uh, the new up, updated and upgraded control box um, you have your front connections here and your laser and spindle switch connection for the laser, offline controller, the USB, and the Z probe. And then uh, pretty typical again for like the uh, uh, original version of the 4030, your emergency stop, reset, pause, and resume button. And then this, if you're going to use the original spindle, you have your speed control here off to the side. I think one of the biggest things that's an upgrade here for this um, is the type of connections here on the back for all your motors and your limit switches and everything. I like that they're uh, screwed in instead of just the plugs because I had a lot of problems on the original version. Sometimes if you're working around it closely you might pull the um, pull the little plastic connector out of here so it's I think that's a really good upgrade to have the uh, screw in type connections for all the cables and motors and everything so um, I really like that. That's a good job there. So, okay, so we'll put that off to the side. And then we'll get to the, uh, the main section here. And 
see we have a couple brackets in here. I don't know, you really can't see that, but we do have a couple brackets. Mounting brackets here for your drag chain. Uh, uh, your motor for your, most likely your X motor here. Yep, your X motor. There's another little baggy there. A couple more brackets. This I'm gonna have to maybe uh, shut the camera down, pull this out of the box because it is uh, pretty heavy here to do with one hand. So, but as you again, you can see that it is uh, pretty well packaged. Let's see if I can get the camera off here, I'll kind of show you a little bit here. And that is the new uh, the new bed here for the uh, version two. So again, I'll go ahead and uh, get this pulled out of the box and uh, we can start putting it together. Okay, well I have this out of the box here and as you can see, um, I had the drag chain assembly here and uh, this is what I was referring to just a moment ago about the screwing connectors for all the, uh, the motors and the limit switches. So that's a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice uh, upgrade there. And also with the upgrade here, the hybrid bed, the MDF and aluminum, it's a bed that's pretty nice uh, upgrade as well. And just some of the other changes that they've made here, as you can see on the front here, um, this used to be a 20 by 80 uh, extrusion, but they went with a 2040, and it sits a little bit lower to the uh, to the work surface, um, which is not a big deal. It just keeps things from rolling under there, I guess. As uh, and keeps a little extra dust from coming out and uh, these uh, assembly plates here the corner brackets that's really nice it does have a um, almost a textured powder coat finish to it so that's a pretty good uh, pretty nice uh, touch there and the dust baffles here they go up a lot higher than the than, than the uh, the baffles that they came out with as an extra um, for the original version or on, that were on the original version of the machine so that should uh, should help keep uh, a lot of the dust off of the ball screws in here. So, um, and then again, what you really can't see them, but the the other upgrade is the uh, the closed loop motors, which are on the back, so that um, you know you don't have to uh, switch those to the front to access the uh, the little wheels. Um, like I said, you do have this little uh, nut driver here which will go in if you do need to adjust adjust the motors or adjust the carriage assembly there the wheel assembly uh, back and forth to make it parallel with uh, one side to the other so you can go ahead and just do that from the front so I think that's a nice touch and upgrade also um, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get things a little laid out here a little better and I'll follow the instruction booklet and start putting it together. Okay, so the next thing to do is we're going to uh, mount the uh, x-axis carriage here onto the machine and um, you can see here um, it is uh, leaning backwards a little bit and uh, it just kind of slides right in. There's a little notch on the plate and it just kind of fits down in there to help it Help it go down in. And there are four screws on each side. I'll show you that here in a moment. We'll go ahead and uh, put those in. Okay, so as you can see here, there's four screws here on either side. These are the M5 screws. Um, I think they're 14 uh, millimeters long. So we'll go ahead and put these in. Now I know a lot of people, uh, they do like to put the Loctite on their screws before they put them in just to help hold them in place, but I don't have any with me at the moment, so for now I think this will be good enough. Uh, if you do use the machine a lot, you know, on a daily basis, that might be something to uh, consider doing just to help keep them from vibrating loose. So 
And I don't know if I mentioned uh, previously, but I did measure the distance um, between between the wheel carriage here and the back extrusion just to make sure they are both the same distance. Just to, it makes it a little easier to get to get everything uh, put together when they're both uh, pretty uh, pretty well even. Just from putting these in, these are pretty tight. They seem to be a lot tighter uh, fit than the screws on the original 4030. So I think I should be good for now without Loctite. But I think, uh, you know, if I plan on using this a lot, I'll definitely want to uh, get some Loctite for it. All right. So there's the first side. Spin this around. Second side. Another nice upgrade that I just uh, kind of noticed here also is the um, limit switches are on the outside here. Uh, they used to be on the inside here um, on the original version, which and I had problems with my limit switches with some of the wires. Got dinged up and I had to replace them and it was a pain in the butt to try and get in there and, uh, and mess with that. So that's I do like that there, that if you need to... Uh, replace your limit switches if they go bad or the wires get uh, banged up or broken then it makes it a lot easier to go ahead and um, replace those out so again that's a, another nice uh, touch not necessarily too much of an upgrade but it is a it is a uh, an upgrade for it so I do like that And I also think that this finish here, uh, it, like I said, I don't know if you can see it in the video here in the, in the picture, but it is kind of a textured finish as opposed to the original was more of just a, uh, uh, an, an anodized look to it where this is more of a uh, powder coated look to it. So I don't know if it is powder coat or not, but it, uh, definitely a nice, nice finish on it. One more to go. And also just, uh, you know, another nice feature is having the whole base assembly basically put together for you so you don't have to go ahead and, um, you know, put all the individual bed pieces in or any other assembly. I think it helps keep it square. Um, I didn't check it for square yet, but I will do that just to make sure that the machine is square. But I don't imagine that um, it, it could be too far out of square. So um, I could go ahead and check that now. I may do just to again make sure that it is square. So I'm just going to pull corners. This way. Well, you're gonna have to do it in the, over here. All right. Yeah, that is. Uh, that looks pretty good. That is dead on square. So that's good. That you know, I don't have to uh, try to adjust it. And I think just having the bed on here, um, right from. Uh, you know the manufacturing and assembly at the plant helps to do that I'm sure they probably checked it out pretty good and made sure everything was square and uh, and I think also just having these upgraded uh, connector plates here and uh, it definitely have a lot more screws in it I think I'm not sure but it does look like it's a little bit more uh, fasteners put into the um, into the connector plate so that should also help keep it from racking if you're going to move it around a lot or whatnot so 
we'll go ahead and uh, go on to the next step, which is to install the Z-axis module. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pause it here for a moment and uh, get everything uh, together, all the parts together that I need, and we'll go ahead and put that together. Alright, so I spun this around here and I'm going to get ready to mount the, the XZ axis or the Z carriage here assembly onto the machine. Um, and again, you're going to mount this from the back. Uh, there's four holes here. And, um, you know, so this will go onto the front here like this. And I have a can of paint there. Just a little can of paint that's going to sit underneath it because it is a little heavy to kind of do it by yourself and uh, trying to hold that up with one hand. So I have that there. I just prop that underneath it and that'll uh, help me get the screws in. But uh, you're going to use the, um, I think it's the M5 by 16 uh, screws. Here you're going to have the screw. You have the spring washer, or some people call it a lock washer, just with the way it's uh, uh, made there, and the flat washer. So go ahead, and the uh, spring washer goes on first, and then the flat washer. So I'll go ahead and put those together here quick, and uh, we'll get this mounted up. And again, you may uh, you may want to put Loctite on these if you have it handy. Um, but again, I don't have it handy, so I think this should do for right now. Um, once I get into uh, using the machine more, I'll go ahead and uh, put that on. So again, you're going to go ahead and uh, well, initially I'm just going to put this in by hand. I'm going to have the paint can in there to kind of... Help keep the uh, keep the axis or the z-axis at the proper height. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of get one of them in there, partially just to help hold it, and I'll get another one at the top here. And uh, this is a nice nice touch here too for. Um, mounting this on. Um, on Again, on the original version, you had to mount them from the front. And uh, it wasn't the easiest thing to do if you needed to remove it or work on it, whatever. So I'm just going to snug those just a little bit, leave a little bit of play in those so that way I can make sure um, that, the, uh, that this is aligned correctly with the bed square. So I'll go ahead and get that. I'll get these other two at the bottom. So again, nice touch to have these accessible from the back. So, you know, if you do need to, to work on it or things come loose, you know, you don't have to try and, and mess with it on the front. Because again, that was covered up on the original version. Okay, so I have the machine spun around again, and this is really the only square I have right now is this uh, big framing square. But actually this will help because uh, typically when you want to square something up, it's usually best to have the, uh, the biggest type of square you can use. Um, uh, that makes it more accurate. And as you can see here with the, this piece going the whole way across the bed, I know that that's flat dead on there. Instead of just having a smaller square, let's we'll say if I were to use um, a smaller square, now obviously this isn't going to work because it's not long enough, but the, usually the shorter the base you have. Now if I had one that was a little bit longer of this here and tried to square it up with one that was just a little bit longer, I mean you can see that this base is not as long. Um, and it's not going to cover much of it. It's only going to square it up to whatever I lay it on to this one particular piece. So if there is any kind of variation um, on the bed, 
then chances are it's going to be a little bit more out of square. So, um, you know, usually the bigger the square you have when you're trying to square something up, the more accurate it becomes. So but this is the only one I have that's going to actually reach up here to this uh, spindle mount to make sure that it's square. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on there. And so now I know that that's pretty, pretty flat across all five pieces of the board. And so that's, uh, you really can't, you might not be able to see it, but I can see it here that it is um, squared up. This, this flat surface is lined up with the edge of this, and then this here is all totally flat. So I know for the most part, that's gonna be pretty darn close to being square. So hopefully I won't have to tram it um, too much. Maybe the small adjustment here, micro adjustment or whatever, but um, I think I should be good uh, um, right now the way it is. So I'll go ahead and put the other two screws in. I, had, I did take those out just to make it easier. The bottom screws I took out here. So I'm going to go ahead put those in and then I'll go uh, go on to the next step. Alright, so the next step here is going to be installing your x-axis motor. Um, I don't know if you can see it here. I do have the coupler here, the motor, and some uh, I believe it's M4 by 12 screws. Yep, socket cap screws here, so, and I don't know that you can see it too much here, but there is a flat spot um, on here, and also in the ball screw here inside, there's a flat spot. And then on this coupler here, there are some bigger screws that you can see here, and then there are smaller set screws. These are the smaller ones are going to be the ones you want to line up with the flat flat spot on the motor and on the ball screw. So I'll go ahead and uh, move this around a little bit uh, so you can get a better better look at it. But there's uh, four screws here on the side that, uh, that these four screws are going to hold the motor on with. So I'll go ahead and spin this around again and uh, we'll go ahead and get this mounted. Alright, so um, what I'm going to do here to start is I mounted the coupler on to the motor first. And I left about a quarter inch gap in there and then uh, what you want to do before you tighten it down too much is uh, just go ahead and ch check it out make sure it's gonna um, that your coupler is gonna slide on at least halfway if not maybe a little more but you don't want it touching uh, the nut there so just leave it a space that's probably about an eighth inch to three sixteenths of an inch there so that should look good and uh, but what I'm gonna do is back this out and I'm just gonna turn this around so that the set screw is facing me. So that way when I put it back on, and then I'm gonna put a couple screws in here just to, just to hold it. Wrench over here. So that way it takes kind of, I can use both hands to kind of adjust it here. So I'll go ahead and screw in there to begin with and then just another one to help hold the motor in place a while so everything's lined up straight and then I can go ahead and tighten down this small set screw here and you just want to be careful that you don't tighten them too much because if you do need to replace a coupler or whatever take it off your motor burns up whatnot um, you know you can strip these out very easily and then uh, to get them off it's it's a real pain in the butt so uh, snug it up pretty good but just don't over tighten because these uh, these wrenches will also um, strip out very easily so then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and spin spin this around and make sure these bigger screws are also tightened up just to make sure the coupler is completely tight. Just got that one. Mm -hmm. and one more 
I'll make sure the small one is snug on this side. So that should be pretty good. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and head on to the next step. Okay, next in assemblies, we're going to mount the Y-axis uh, drag chain brackets here. Um, this one is a little bit wider that you'll notice than the, uh, the X-axis bracket. This one goes up on top of the carriage, and then this one here. Um, this one's going to be installed with two uh, M4 screws, and these are going to be two M5 by 12. These are M4 by 6, so go ahead and uh, put those on. And there is, you see here, there's two holes here in the bottom, and um, there are two holes, which I don't know that you can see it very well, just with the angle of the camera, but there's two holes here in the extrusion here, right by the end for the, for the M5 screw. So I'll go ahead and put these on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put the drag chain on. Um, these are going to be mounted with um, four of the M4 um, flathead screws. And uh, if you can see here, there's two holes in this bracket and this bracket here. And just, uh, you know, make sure that you have the connectors for the control box going to the back there. So you know that then the, the section here uh, will be mounted up on the top here once I put those other brackets on. So I'll go ahead and get these two sections put on. Back. Now with the wires on here, it does make it a little, a little more challenging, but it's, it's really not that bad. And I think from the old, original 4030, they may have only been one screw in there, but I'm not sure. So it's good that they had two screws, because mine was always coming loose um, every time I would bang it. Uh, so this is looks like it's a little bit better, better connection here. So. And I don't know for certain. And if you did happen to notice, um, which I did off screen, is I didn't, uh, or I didn't do it on camera, is put the two, two screws in the bottom of this motor. So I went and did that off screen. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, mount the uh, drag chain brackets up for the top here. So I'll go ahead and spin that around and do that next. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mount the, um, the uh, other... Uh, drag train brackets up here on this carriage here as you can see uh, the smaller one here this uh, open end points towards the back and that notch will point towards the inside of the machine and uh, that will get mounted with the m m5 screws 
the socket head screws and this bracket here will have the smaller M4 socket head screw. So I'll go ahead and uh, screw these on and mount the drag chain. All right, so go ahead and mount the drag chain on the rest of it. So, now this just has to twist around. So it kind of lays like that, and then that will get the M4 flat cap screws uh, like this here. And again, there are two, two screws in each, in each end here. So that's on there pretty good. And then uh, I believe the next step is to go ahead and um, connect all the wires. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, I'm going to pull out the, um, you know, the control box and get everything connected up. And one thing to point out here, and I'll show you here in the book in just a moment. Now on each of uh, the... Um, stepper motors and let me see if I can do this here and show you but there is there are these little switches right there and if you happen to bump those and you're not sure what position they go back in there is a spot in the manual that will explain um, what the setting should be for that so that's a pretty good thing that's the first time I've seen those on uh, stepper motors so and I was wondering about those I don't know if that's out of focus or not but you can see those little switches so again if you happen to uh, knock those out of position you can go ahead and refer to the booklet and that will tell you um, where to where to position those switches again so I'll go ahead and get the control box out and then uh, we'll go and hook everything up. Okay, so I have most of the wires connected, um, but I didn't uh, film most of that because it's, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I just kind of wanted to show you specifically here um, for the uh, connections to the control box. As you see, it's two pins. And if you can tell, there's a little notch in the bottom of the, uh, the one end of it here. 
and that you're going to line up that's going to go down facing your workbench but you can see that there I don't know if you can see it or not but there is like a little uh, nub right there so you're just going to have to line those up make sure it's seated the whole way in there and then just tighten down uh, the screw here the screw cap so that goes on and again the rest of it's pretty self-explanatory um, like you can see here everything's pretty well uh, labeled as far as where they go Z motor spindle and then the same goes for up here for all the other connections uh, you know Z limit switch um, even you know for the spindle motor red to red blue to blue and then um, also there is one thing here that I'll show you for the um, for the X motor when you mount your X motor make sure the connector uh, spots here are, are facing downward towards your workbench because um, these cables will not reach up to the top so again um, you know when you mount this motor make sure that these are pointing down and then that way your um, your wires will reach otherwise you'll have to pull it back off and spin it around and do it again so uh, I think other than that as far as the connections go you know I think I pretty much got it all connected up I'm just going to double check that I've got everything uh, done correctly I'll put the Z probe and the power cord in here the Z probe will go in the front of the control box and I'll get this machine set up to where um, into a position where I can connect it to my computer and um, run it from there so I'll go ahead and move everything around and get ready to um, test it out and make sure everything works and then also uh, later on I will uh, start doing a, a project or two with it and to see how it performs and kind of do a little comparison with the old machine um, so I no longer have my original 4030 I did an extent um, did one of the extension kits on it and um, you know somebody offered me uh, you know to buy it from me so because uh, they didn't want to have to go through and purchase the machine and buy all the kits and extend it so they offered me a pretty good deal and then I showed them how everything uh, was working with the old 4030 which I extended to 6060 or initially I extended I did my own upgrade to the 1010 kit um, which I do have a video on and then um, but they didn't want one that big so they uh, bought it as a 6060 kit that I have so it's good to have another um, 4030 machine here and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, do some projects uh, with that and see how it works and uh, comparison to the old one but I definitely think it's going to be uh, you know worth a look at uh, if you want to um, you know upgrade to a, a more sturdy machine so but that'll come those reviews will come later on but as for right now I'll get this hooked up and uh, we'll test it out see how it moves around okay well as you can see here I have everything uh, set up and connected and um, I have the driver set up on my computer and also candle installed but I'll just go over those briefly with you um, it doesn't really take much at all but just to kind of explain some of the um, some of the steps here but um, once you put your USB stick in, you're going to come up to this window right here. And um, so then you'll click on driver. And depending on whether or not you have Windows or Mac, you'll select one of those two. And then you'll have the C3341 SER. So you'll just double click that and then double click the setup. And click yes to allow this to change your computer and then you'll hit install so it'll take a moment or two to install but then once it installs uh, it'll tell you that it you know is successful so then once you do get it installed you come back up here uh, to the main folder here and where it says software candle USG 
And then it includes a universal G-code sender and candle. I use candle. I haven't tried uh, using U or UGS, so I'm not sure um, how to use that one. So I'll just uh, kind of go with the candle for the moment. But I know there's more options and a better functionality, I think, uh, with UGS. So I'll try to mess with that in the future sometime. But for right now, um, you know, you just go in, select each, whichever one you want, and then you know go through the steps to install that double click and then it'll it'll walk you through the process to install that so I have that installed here so then I go ahead to candle and again I have the all that set up and then what you're going to do um, once you get into it you go over here to service and settings and then you're going to have this window pop up and you're going to have some COM ports here to choose from. This one is COM5. Yours might be 3 or 4 or whatever other numbers. But if you have more than one number, just go through each one of those until uh, when you get um, you know, to the correct one, um, you'll be able, you'll see an alarm pop up over here on the right hand side. And you'll be able to unlock the machine. So I have it unlocked. And then I'm going to go ahead and come back out a little bit here. And just see if I got it all connected properly. I'm going to go ahead and home the machine. And as you can see, I'm all connected properly. And one thing I don't know if you notice if you have a 4030 original version of it, you'll notice that it is much quieter with the closed loop motors as opposed to the regular stepper motors. Um, so that's definitely uh, a good thing there to have those on. So um, just gives you better accuracy and again, a lot quieter. So now that I have that set up, uh, well, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get the motor to turn on. Even the 400 watt motor is a lot quieter than the 300. All right. Well, so looks like I've got everything uh, done correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video for a moment and um, get a piece of scrap wood or something set up and go ahead and do a test run of one of the files that comes with the USB stick and um, see how it does. Okay, well I have everything set up here. I'll just do a quick test cut and we'll see how it goes.
Okay, well as you can see, uh, did pretty well. I didn't obviously didn't go real fast uh, or real deep with this cutter. Just mainly just wanted to uh, check out the overall movement of the machine and whatnot. But I will be uh, eventually um, be doing some more projects and uh, things that'll test out the machine a little more than just a uh, simple V carving into uh, and this is just a piece of half inch plywood so uh, again this is the Genmitsu Prober XL 4030 version 2 and um, so far I like the machine as far as overall impressions it, it, there are a lot of nice little upgrades to this machine um, the only thing that it would be lacking would be linear rails instead of the wheels but um, still it's not bad at all I used my old Prover uh, 4030 for a couple of years and I really put it through the paces and tested it and it held up pretty well with the wheels um, I think only one time did I have a problem with the wheel uh, having a flat spot so again the wheels aren't necessarily a bad thing uh, just with regular care and maintenance you can make this uh, last a pretty long time and uh, again with all the other upgrades like the hybrid bed the ball screws, uh, the closed loop motors. Um, appears to me that uh, Saint Smart and Genmitsu did a really good job of, uh, you know, making some upgrades to the machine, making it more accurate, quieter, and uh, possibly even, uh, you know, with faster speeds. So, again, I'm going to. Okay, there you can see the end result of my quick test car. Obviously didn't go too fast or too deep with the speed and the depth of cut. Mainly I just wanted to see how smooth and quiet it operates with the upgraded ball screws and the closed loop stepper motors. But uh, I'll definitely be getting into some more challenging detailed projects in the future. Uh, both with the original spindle and when I upgrade it to a VFD or carbide router spindle. So um, I'm going to be doing some things in acrylic with drag bits, some brass or aluminum projects and also some detailed 3D carvings. But uh, I'll post those videos and keep you updated on how it does with those different types of projects and materials. But um, just to go over some of the other specs that I may have missed earlier, um, the overall work area of the machine and size of the machine is pretty similar to the original 4032. The uh, work area is 15.75 inches wide by 11.81 inches deep and 4.33 inches of z-height clearance and then the overall dimensions are 29.13 inches wide by 23.82 inches deep and 19.2 inches high and I did check those dimensions with the tape measure and they are pretty accurate so if you want to build an enclosure before you get the machine you can pretty much uh, know that those dimensions are accurate and then just uh, give yourself a little clearance around the sides and know that your machine is going to fit in the enclosure if you do that beforehand. Um, some of the other specs here, the maximum speed is 5,000 millimeters per minute. So when I uh, get into doing some other projects, I'll try and test out the speeds and depth of cut just to see how well it performs and see if uh, compares, see how it compares to the original uh, 4030. Um, see the again the NEMA 23 closed loop stepper motors the ball screws are, are the big some of the biggest upgrades uh, along with the hybrid bed um, with the MDF and aluminum the upgraded z-axis is a really nice big upgrade to it um, there's really no play or wiggle room that I've seen in that so far um, you do have the eccentric nuts uh, on the bottom of the carriage wheels so if you do have any wiggle room in your uh, movement, you can adjust those and to make it run a little smoother. And again, the upgraded control box with the screwing connectors, like I mentioned earlier, that's a nice touch to upgrade that. And uh, I don't know that I'm missing anything, but if, or, if you do have any questions or concerns or comments uh, or even specific projects you want to see, let me know. But other than that, if you're looking at getting a CNC machine of similar size and budget, definitely check it out. I think it's worth checking out. It seems to be a really nice, well-built, sturdy machine, just like the original 4030, but with a lot more upgrades. So I'll put a link in the description. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's definitely worth checking out.
to see if it's something that uh, something that's the right fit for you but I think it's going to be the right fit for me and uh, you know I'm definitely going to be doing a lot of things with it and see how it see how it goes so if you have any other questions or comments feel free to let me know but I'll like I said I'll include a link in the description for for this machine so you can check it out a little more get some more detailed specs or photos of it but other than that uh, thanks for watching